Hey guys, this is Andres Smirnoff with the Fast Lane Truck and with me... Kent with MrTruck.com And we're here because it's another Ask Mr. Truck. Yes! <laughs> Can I ask you a few questions? Ask me anything you want. These are the viewer questions. These are the questions you submitted to us. So thank you for doing that and keep your questions coming. How about Truck Nuts the truck book? Truck Nuts the book. Everybody needs one of these. This is such an informative book. Helps you in so many areas whether you're buying a used truck, want to know if you're diesel or gas, or want to know how long it takes to go up the Eidgallon. How about, first question comes from Zach is choosing a mid-sized truck and he came up with two choices and he wants to make a decision between a GMC Canyon or a Honda Ridgeline. He says here that he doesn't really need a truck. He's certainly a lifestyle user, but the ability to put stuff in the back of the bed like mountain bikes or paddle boards, etc. is really attractive. What do you uh, suggest? What can I say? I love the Canyon. Okay. I mean, that's all I know. I, I love that Duramax in the Canyon. I, I, I think it's awesome. A new 8-speed now that they have in the gas engine is awesome. So, Well, here's my take on this question. I think because he's not worried about towing too much or carrying really heavy loads, mm -hmm. I think the Honda Ridgeline maybe is a little bit better for you because, first of all, the Ridgeline feels like a crossover, like a Honda yeah. Pilot would. Right. So it has that sort of comfortable ride on the highway and since you don't have a lot of weight, heavy weight requirements, maybe that's the right truck for you, especially if you have pedal boards, you know, um, you also have that compartment in the bottom of the bed on the ridge line. Well, that's the pitch that Honda makes is exactly what he's described. So, <laughs> so I don't know, I think his decision is made. I think he's the ideal Honda ridge line owner. But. So this question comes from David Reynolds. How does actual ratio affect towing capacity in trucks? It seems like, for example, a 410 axle ratio would be better than the 373 gearing. Well, then that's how, if you look in the towing guide from any of the manufacturers, that's how they do. You got a lower axle ratio, like a 430 or a 410, it's going to have a higher towing capacity than a 355. You know, now Ford, they're talking about just 331 with the, with the 10 speed on the F 150. If I was towing all the time, I would have went to 430, but if I actually want to be able to afford to drive somewhere, I went to 373. And, you know, and I can like, look at GMs now. Their favorite axle ratio is a 342 in a gas yeah. engine. And they do very well in a 342. They have been 373 in the Duramax forever, unless you go to 45, 5500. Mm -hmm. So they give you only one choice. But uh, I, that's what it's all about. You know, higher axle or lower, at, we call it lower, bigger number, 410. Gives you more cooling, keeps your RPMs up. So you're always in the power band. That's the whole idea in towing. That's what tow mode does. And all those things helps you keep your RPMs where you need to be for peak torque, peak horsepower. Yeah, so basically you're gaining uh, towing ability with a low ratio like a 410 or a 430, but you're hurting your fuel economy. I'm considering purchasing a slide-in truck camper and have seen many different options for half-ton, three-quarter tons, and one-ton trucks capacities. Aftermarket add-ons like anti-sway devices, tie-downs, suspensions, Firestone airbags, or airbags in general. And then there is, of course, the tire wheel combinations. What do that's, you have to say? Well, that's you know that has relates to payload on your truck, and then of course that relates to towing capacity. And if you use a really heavy trailer, you may not have much left over for tongue weight. And all those accessories are good. I mean, you're you're talking about a camper which's really susceptible to side wind, so a heavy anti sway bar is a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. And we talk about suspension. I know people, uh, you know, the, the most overloaded trucks there are are the truck camper people. And, I mean, they'll go, they'll put a, a, an overload spring, they'll put on an air ride, you know, air suspension. And airlift, that's what they're called. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, yeah, you do have the equipment, right? And that's a big thing. Because I mean, you want to be able to get it tied in there really well. And then, you know, you want to keep your truck level so that everything works well. Mm -hmm. And that's as far as brakes and, and bearings in your axles and all that. So that's what you've got to know. you got to know kind of what your gross weight is on that camper. And then decide if that's going to fit into a half ton, three quarter ton, or a one ton. Okay, next question is about choosing the class of truck for towing. And Nathan and I recently did a video where we compared a Chevy Colorado Duramax yeah. against this truck right here, the uh, first generation Ford Raptor. Because a lot of you have asked, you know, I have a trailer, uh, it's within the, my payload capacity and towing capacity, but which truck should I get? Should I get a midsize versus um, half ton or more? So this question comes from Patrick 
Petrosini. So thank you, Patrick, for this question. And Patrick says, I've seen a lot of your videos with the, using the Tacoma midsize truck V6 for towing. I currently have a 2013 um, camper, which is 23 feet long, with a dry weight of about 4,300 pounds. He's thinking about a three-quarter ton, like a F-250 with a 6.2 liter V8, to do the job. What would you recommend? Well, he's getting this little bigger trailer. I mean, he knows what his Tacoma will do now. And, then, of course, that's got to be set up right with a good weight distributing hitch that controls sway, yes. levels you out. Yeah. But since he's already got the truck, he can already try out the new trailer and see how it handles before he makes that decision and buys another truck. Right. I mean, it's always good to go bigger if you can, but if you don't need to, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, I, I like a bigger truck pulling a trailer like that for the control. And I've, I've done that with my toy hauler. You know, you get too small a truck on there, and it, it takes some of the fun out of it because you're really hanging on to that steering wheel. Yeah, so check out the video. Um, you could see it right here. Sometimes it's not about the weight, but actually it's about the size. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I mean, if you think about how trailers are shaped, if this was a horse trailer or, or if there was a boat behind us, right. we could tow more and, and more stable. Right, it'd be more stable because it's aerodynamic yep. and, and whatnot. Next question is about hitch pins. It comes from Dan Erickson. My question is, I just purchased a 27-foot travel trailer with a weight distributing hitch. I've only pulled the trailer about three times, and I noticed the hitch pin has some deep grooves from the hitch receiver in this. Is this normal? Should I use a better quality pin? Maybe a grade 8 bolt? That seems odd because, you know, maybe his hitch is hollow too. If you got a solid hitch shaft, shank, you don't usually have anything like that. But that sounds like a wrong pin because I've even used aluminum pins and they kind of worried me, but I've never had them get grooved. So something is off there. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but yeah, you can use a grade 8 bolt and you got to use wrenches to put it on, but you can get grade 8 hitch pins too. Yeah, my, I've got dozens of those things. I don't have any grooves in any of them, so I don't know what the deal is there. I mean, I like a good stainless steel pin. But uh, we use the Gen Y hitches right, uh, whenever right. we do our towing, right. and um, they have, what is it, stainless steel pins? Yeah, stainless steel pin. And, and cool we've never had an issue with it. Right, I, I have never, never had issue even with my aluminum And pins, we've so. towed up to like 12,000 pounds on the, on the bumper. Yeah, so, so. I, I'm concerned that you have some other issue that you need to check out. Well, thank you for sending your questions. You can comment and send more questions down on this video, or you can send them to ask at tfltruck.com. Thank you, and you can go to tfltruck.com for more news, views, and real-world reviews on trucks, and where else? MrTruck.com. Thank you.